Okay. So good morning, students. I think now you are only three of you. Fine, no problem. We'll admit the other students as well. But of course, the attendance, uh, I'll not be marking for them from my side. Well, last class, we'll directly like, you know, jump into the subject because we already lost some time. And last class, we learned about, um, you no, know, we went through the introduction of project monitoring and control, and we saw the purpose of monitoring and uh, monitoring and evaluation and so on. Can some, any one of you recapitulate what we learned during the last class? Can you just tell me what we learned during the last class? Can you recapitulate in a summary form? Just tell me only the crux of it, the main points. Can you tell me, Mohamed? Mohamed uh, Hashi. Oh, Mohamed Jirde. Hello, hello, teacher. Yeah. Good morning. Tell me. Hello. Hello? Yeah, yeah, tell me. Uh, can you just recapitulate? Uh, give me just a one line summary of what we learned during the last class. Just one or two lines. Just give me the crux of it. What did you learn? Do you know? Can you answer me? Okay. So we'll do one thing. Um, I'll allow you to go through this, you know, the slides. Uh, and uh, probably for the next class, I'm going to ask you questions on uh, chapter one, two, and three. Okay, so just to set the perspective, of course, we were learning on monitoring and evaluation. Okay, so Mama Jilde is joined back. So let me see if you'd like to answer or we can, if not, we can just continue. Uh, Mama Jude, can you answer or? Uh, hello? Yeah, yeah, hello, yeah. good morning, teacher. Ah, mm -hmm. I'm here you now, teacher. Okay. That's great. Hello? Yeah, 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 Mama Jude, can you answer me? Yes, teacher. What's the, what's the question, teacher? My uh, connection you... is not good. I'm feeling okay. bad. Okay. Can you just recapitulate what we learned during the last class? Just give me one or two sentences, the crux of what we learned, the summary of what we learned, just one or two sentences would suffice. Okay, thank you, teacher. Uh, sorry for my, my problems not going well. Uh, we have learned uh, 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 introduction lesson. The thing is we have learned um, was include uh, the ways we are, going forward uh, like to the uncertainty when when some problem facing us the way we can solve that problem i can't remember only that sentence but i was busy nowadays i was preparing another lessons okay so i'm not recovered it okay so uh, last class thanks thanks mama Jude. so last class we gave an introduction about what was monitoring and evaluation the purpose of monitoring and evaluation the scope of it and how uh, the most important part of it is how we are ready for any contingencies that might crop up in a project so as to not to impede the progress of the project so that is the reason we need monitoring and evaluation so monitoring and evaluation are two distinct aspects however they are two important tools in project management if you 
you are a project manager, of course, what your team would do is your team would be executing the project on site. But the, what you would do as a project manager, you'd have another team, uh, you know, the back office team and the back office team with the project manager, your job would be to monitor to evaluate and to control uh, the systems to the extent uh, to the extent that you would see that the project is being delivered on time so basically you would see that project schedules are uh, you know are uh, complied with there would be project schedules and the project should go according to the scope of the project there should be nothing anything uh, nothing that you know uh, uh, you know, there should not be any intervening factors that would, you know, impede the progress of the project. And for example, there is a, like dearth of raw materials or lack of raw materials, and that was actually unplanned. So you would also think about contingencies in the very beginning, and you would have a contingency plan before you, and then you would be monitoring constantly, like how the, pro uh, the, the project is progressing, whether it's meeting its milestones or not. In case of the other raw materials, you would see whether it was anticipated earlier. In case there is something new that is added to the scope, you would say, okay, I need to arrange this. Then you would think about the budgeting system. So the problem here is, oh, the, the, the role of the project manager is to monitor and evaluate so as to have, uh, you know, to achieve the goals of the project and deliver the project on time. So on time delivery and being within the scope of the project is something which is a significant factor and needs to be complied with in project management and as a project manager your duty will be to monitor to control to evaluate the process so as to assure on time delivery meet the timelines meet the uh, you know the the milestones there and see that the project is delivered as per the scope of the project within the budget sometimes they can go beyond the budget but then the uh, you know while the 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 project is on you would seek relevant approvals for increasing the budget or you would try to cut down uh, some kind of an ex expenses which was possible for example you'd like to uh, you would possibly retire some expense for example training expenses uh, you might feel that maybe your staff on site would require certain training see there are certain supervisors on site technicians on site example it's a site project so it's a say that it's a construction project and there are certain people who might require certain training in certain areas then you would say that no i have some other team so i would replace that team with this team so i would really cut down the training expenses you would retire uh, some expenses and uh, you would uh, you know still move on within the budget so this is the role of a project manager and that is a purpose of monitoring and evaluation and of course it involves even control so today we are going to move further and just cling to the aspect of monitoring first and see what is the purpose of monitoring Thank you. what are Thank the tools you. there Thank what are the methods or the techniques of monitoring and uh, how is a monitoring man uh, plan prepared and what are the basics uh, you know uh, basic elements that are required to be present in a monitoring plan of course it would uh, vary from project to project However, what are the basic elements that need to be present in a monitoring plan? So let's go to our slides. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, teacher. Welcome. Okay. So what is a monitoring plan? So every project needs vigilant monitoring, and that is a significant factor that leads to the successful implementation or achievement of project goals. I'm reiterating, I'm repeating it for you. Every project needs vigilant monitoring. That means you have to be alert. A project manager has to be alert. So that is his role. He's not, not necessarily on site carry on the project, but a project manager, Normally, his role is to monitor, to control, to evaluate, and see that the project is aligned with the purpose and not the allied factors, whatever we discussed. So just sticking to the monitoring plan, every project needs vigilant monitoring, and that is a significant factor, an important factor that leads to the successful implementation or achievement of project goals. 
Now, project man monitoring is a continuous process. And of course, it's a complex process. It is a complex and a continuous process. The purpose of which is also to foresee, you know, you need to uh, kind of foresee or have a particular forecast in mind um, of the potential threats, potential risks, and probable impediments or hurdles that may impede or obstruct the project pr progress. So a good project manager, while he's monitoring the project, he would also see, he'll be able to forecast, uh, say, project delivery. He would say that, uh, say, for example, project is supposed to be delivered by the 30th of June. So it's a six months project, it started somewhere in January and it's supposed to be delivered on 30th of June. But probably there has been some changes uh, in the export or, you know, or the, sorry, in the import, uh, you know, regulations for which they, the, the, the raw materials that they were supposed to receive was delayed. Or there are some changes or unanticipated changes or something or risks that has just come up which he could not foresee before. So risks basically can be either managed or sometimes there are unmanageable risks. For example, suppose there's a very bad weather and it's a project on site you're not able to implement the project. So that might give rise to project delays. Are you understanding? Some risks may be foreseen for which they have contingency funds. Say for example, uh, like, um, you know, um, certain extra expenses that might be there, certain regulations and laws might be changed or prices might have been increased and they might feel the need of, you know, or a particular subcontractor has just backed out and then you need a new subcontractor and the project is just ongoing and you have to see the project is delivered on time. So you might contract with some other subcontractor so that just in the best interest of you keeping your word and you honoring your contract with the main employer of the project. And then you contract with somebody with a, probably a with little higher cost. So you see, these are some of the potential risks that possibly could be foreseen or things that cannot be foreseen or that which are not foreseen may be manageable or not manageable. Manageable risks are something that can be easily managed by the by the team, by the project team, and uh, you know under the leadership of a project director or a manager, whoever. But things that cannot be foreseen and just happens, and they're not able to manage it. That comes under the ambit of unmanageable risks. So therefore, project monitoring monitoring and control is a must in every project management. And it is a kind of a sequenon. It is an important aspect of project management. So the monitoring plan, while monitoring, they prepare a monitoring plan. The monitoring plan of a project consists of observing the trajectory of the progress. That is uh, observing the route of the progress of the project how the, the project is progressing. So they would be observing it carefully, you know, vigilantly, the trajectory of the project and monitoring all the relevant aspects of implementation strategy, the recalls, the data developed during the project, essentially tracking the performance through the KPIs as well, that is a key performance indicators. And monitoring is, you know, is preceded by the conception of an idea, just as we learned during the last class, it's preceded by, of course, the conception of an idea, then the project planning stage, and then of course they implement it. And during implementation, the monit monitoring and control takes its place. I mean, takes its uh, you know uh, the, you reach that stage of monitoring and control, and then evaluation, and then you move on to uh, proceed to achieve the milestones and finally, of course, delivery, and then of course is commissioning, depending upon what type of project it is. Now. The primary question that will come to the fore and which must be identified and examined is whether the project is evolving as per the project plan. Some other aspects that need to be examined are whether there are any impediments, whether there are any hurdles, whether there are any, any unintended changes. Now, changes that may be incorporated in a project, they either can be, uh, you know, 
approved or not approved. So all changes cannot be just at the decision of the project manager. He has to go to the higher management or he has to also go to the employer of the project, the one who has really called in for the project, who's called for the tenders and so on. Or he has to also uh, seek the advice of the stakeholders who are the main people, the interested parties in the project. So all decision making cannot be just in his hands. So he needs to uh, seek relevant approvals. Uh, are you understanding me? So. And in case of any unintended changes, of course, yeah. You, need, um, yeah, you need approvals. And then you also go in for uh, any anticipated changes, then it's fine. Then probably the, he has already sought earlier approvals. And suppose there is any problem, then there is a need for any corrective action, any, you know, remedifying the problem to correct those uh, situations there. So that calls for a corrective action. And while planning to implement, you know, the corrective action. So he needs to, uh, you know, this is how the monitoring process goes on. So he takes into consideration all these factors. And in case there are any impediments, then he starts addressing them swiftly so as to meet the project goal and not to impede the progress of the project and also to adhere to the timelines. So automated software tools may also be used for devising an app monitoring plan these days. While how they do it is by feeding relevant data into the system or optionally, it can be also chopped out manu manually, that is, uh, you know, the, the, the project manager can chalk it out manually, you know, by draft it out. However, thereby monitoring is a significant process in project evaluation or evolu evolution, sorry, it's not evalu it's evolution, as the project evolves, as the project is progressing. So it is a significant process in project evolution. And the process involves devising a plan you structuring a plan by collecting relevant data to track the progress of the current project that is the ongoing project by listing the key performance indicators, the KPIs, or even the performance indicators, the milestones or goals and the targets of each milestone, the strategy for monitoring each milestone, contingencies with the indication of contingency plan. Sometimes uh, con all contingencies cannot be you know, covered by the contingency plan because something might hit just all of a sudden. And uh, a, uh, I mean, even the wisest and most prudent person may not be really aware. However, when, the, when COVID struck the world, I was actually amazed uh, in my practical experience to see that there were very, very few companies, of course, who did not know about COVID, but they were quite ready of, for you know, any unexpected contingencies uh, you know, in a way that they were well guarded and well fortified and their projects, you know, they could not really come up with, uh, you know, any uh, kind of uh, some answers or, uh, you know, some kind of uh, an excuse saying that it's because of the COVID will have to uh, kind of delay the project and so on. There were very few companies that you can count on, you know, on your fingers that they were really ready with a solid contingency plan and they could really deliver the project on time. Well, but but the question for them as well was with the workers uh, on site where they were, uh, some of them had contracted, uh, you know, COVID, but then they had again a team ready who would really replace the, the workers who were on site. So some of them are really ready. Now it depends how well it is strategized. So there can be probable impediments, improbable impediments, risks that can be managed, risks that may not be, be you know, it's un unmanageable. And when there are manageable risks, then you take corrective actions when the risk, you know, occurs really, or when the problems come, then you can really take corrective actions. So a good monitoring plan therefore, in case we get disconnected, please join back. A good monitoring plan, therefore, paves the way as a groundwork for okay. a, yeah, thank you. As a groundwork for a good strategic response plan. So therefore, it is a groundwork for a good strategic response plan. In case there is a problem, then you're ready with a strategic response in advance. So it is a groundwork, it is a base for a strategic response plan. Now, what, are the, what is the significance and advantages of project monitoring? The main advantage of project monitoring is that it aids as a swift correction mechanism in the case of issues that may crop up with potential of impeding the progress of the project. 
The, the next uh, important factor or the significance or the advantage of project monitoring is, of course, it aids or it supports in maintaining the alignment of project impl implementation and evolution of progress and growth with the approved project plan design. The third part of it is the transparency is they are able to maintain transparency, especially with the stakeholders and the interested parties or like promoters, investors and so on. And transparency to the extent of whenever there is a problem or a risk that might occur, which might probably delay the project or uh, the deliverables, de deliverables might be hampered uh, with respect to, uh, you know, of course, uh, time and the schedule and so on. So they normally they would intimate these interested parties about the developments of the project and the possible contingencies or possible delays. So transparency. So a good project uh, a good project monitoring plan. It helps as a corrective mechanism. It helps in maintaining. Uh, it helps in the project being aligned with, uh, you know, the plan, the design, and to be within the scope. Next is it helps in maintaining transparency and, you know, on time informing the stakeholders or promoters, investors, all interested parties about the development and possible contingencies and so on. Next is milestones are tracked as well. This may be a source of encouragement. When milestones are tracked, you know, okay, I've completed this milestone. Next, we have completed, we laid the foundation. Now, next, we are moving towards building of the project. So when milestones are tracked, it may be a source of encouragement to the project team on the achievement of milestones, especially significant milestones, and that may encourage them to work and contribute more efficiently towards achieving the final goal and final milestone towards the completion of the project. Next, is it helps track unexpected project delays and make provisions to expedite as may be possible to the best extent. And further, it of course serves as a learning development and improvement tool. So every time it's a learning process, it helps in the learning process, it's a development tool and helps one to really improvise. Next is monitoring principles, the seven standards of developing a monitoring plan. What are the seven basic principles? One is, of course, feasibility and practicality. It must be feasible to the extent that it is properly studied, that proper resources are available. The cost factor also is taken into consideration and so on. So feasibility part, it should be a feasible plan. It should be a practical plan. It, it should have the element of stability that is you know it secures alignment with the purpose of the project and the design project charter the question here is what if there are you know expenses that just you know, it's a cost factor just creeps into the project which was actually not anticipated now this would this would create a kind of an instability and it kind of would really shape the budget of the of the project for that the you know the team the project team headed by the project director or the project head or the project manager whoever is that person you'll have to go and seek relevant approvals so the best thing is try your best to have a good monitoring plan or a good control plan good monitoring control and evaluation plan so while we are talking of monitoring plan, have a good monitoring plan which aims even at stability and to the best possible extent try to uh, have even your contingencies covered. Next part of it, of course, you know, in, in case you anticipate any fluctuations or changes, make prudent and swift accommodation and certain amends that are all in compliance with the scope of the project and the main project contract. Next is the foreseeability part of it. That is forecasting, foreseeability, contingent factors, risks and impediments, demand it, and its uh, monitoring plan, of course, a good monitoring plan would demand vigilance, that is alertness. Next is utility. The practical project tools to be incorporated in the plan would find place in a good monitoring plan and that are both practicable and usable. It should be usable. Next is ethics, of course. The entire process of gathering information, observation, studying, examining, devising strategies should all be ethical. Next is accuracy. Accuracy must be maintained. Information that is incorporated in the monitoring plan should be an uh, should be as accurate as possible. That would really enable achievement. Next is transparency. So all that is required is relevant information should be made part of the monitoring plan, especially apprehended contingencies. 
at the phases of project monitoring. Now, a project monitoring plan must include the pattern of how data will be collected, the draft of how the reports will be prepared based on the data and how it will be presented, all based on the result chain with a visual map. They have a visual map depicting the activities and the outputs of your project. Now, what are the phases in project monitoring? The first part of it would always be identification of goals, the purpose of the project and identification of goals towards achievement of those, the, the, the final project goals and the final deliverables. Next is identify and examine project indicators. Now, this is something very important. Project ind indicators, including performance indicators. The performance indicators are basically are measures of inputs, processes, outputs, outcomes, and impacts for development projects or programs or strategies. So th that's basically they have a particular, uh, you know, a, a, a measurement line or it, it, like a plumb line of you know inputs, processes, outputs, and outcomes. So they normally. Uh, they ex identify and examine project indicators, KPIs, performance indicators, and how to measure indicators, when to measure, who should measure, what is the aim or the target to be achieved, and so on. So practically, project indicators must reference sources of information. This is important. Practically speaking, project indicators must reference source of information, such as data sheets, the period if relevant to the indicator, and so on. Next is you frame the data collection methods, like how the data was really procured. Next, assign responsibility of data collection to different team members and you know, the, the way of reporting the data to appropriate team members. Next is analysis of monitoring reports by drawing up a table of inference charts and explanatory tabs. Next is data review reports and dissemi uh, dissemination plans, like how you would divulge information to the appropriate parties, to the interested parties. So you will have a dissemination plan to disseminate is to share information. So you review the reports, data is first collected, then you review the reports, okay? And then you, you make a yeah. dis dissemination plan and what is required, you share it with the interested parties, including the team members. Next is the models. There are certain models. Uh, 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 there is a particular model. The basic model should basically consist of a project overview, the progress chain, that is the targets and the milestones to be uh, ref, uh, achieved. So there has to be a milestone reference and there has to be a strategic plan that is devised and used monitoring Gantt chart. So this monitoring Gantt chart is normally used in project tracking and highlighting critical parts and can be incorporated into the monitoring plan scheme as well. So therefore a basic model of a monitoring plan or how a monitoring plan should look like, or what are the basic elements that need to be there while you prepare a monitoring plan is that, or monitoring document, it should have a project overview, the scope of the project, the progress chain, what is the uh, milestones that you, you want to achieve, the targets, or what is actually discussed between the parties and milestones it would be achieved. And next is a strategic plan, as well as the monitoring Gantt chart. Uh, now, through, though monitoring a project is more concerned with the progress and performance, examining the status of the project from time to time, a balanced approach is required here by incorporating the overview of the project, the causation aspect. Causation is a cause and effect theory of contingencies. Cause and what has caused the contingency, what is the effect of it, what is the impact of it now later, after knowing the cause, the effect, the impact, then I know now what is the solution for it. Then are the other impediments with strategic pointers to solutions, probable complexities, including extemporaneous complexities and systematic monitoring uh, technique, contextual and external factors such as legal compliance, political changes, and so on. Next is what are the various approaches? So 